Hi everyone. Let me just make sure I'm live in the right place. I am. We're back to our series on living magic. I hope everyone had a nice holiday season and a happy new year. And here we are starting off where we left off right before the new year in our living magic series. So we talked about the four different ways of living, living in the, the chaos and the mess, and then, or living in, um, living in, um, a magical life or living a, in, um, and so there's, there's four different ways of living that we went over and they are the mundane, the, or the messy, the mundane, the magical. Let me go back to my notes because I don't remember them right now. Okay, there we go. So it was, okay, so we went over the Sorry, my internet is acting funny now. Come on, don't do this to me. Goofy thing. Okay, I'm back online now. I shouldn't have been offline in the first place. All right. So we talked about magical living. Living in the madness. Living in the messiness. Living in the mundane or living in magic, where there's four ways of living. We we talked about the mad being the drama and the chaos and the having uncontrollable emotions and being emotionally immature. Um, having behaviors that are that are no longer serving us but not being able to change them. We talked about the messy where things are unkept and unmanaged and un unmaintained. Um, we talked about living in the mundane where things aren't a mess and they're not chaos, but they are boring and dull and monotonous. And at the very least, we want to change all of these things and upgrade them so that we're living magic, so that we're living a life where we can immerse ourselves in moments and events that go smoothly but more than that, we have spontaneity. Spontaneity. We have um, events that aren't pre-planned, that are happening, that are amazing. Our synchronicities and our and our miracles, and the amazing things that happen when our when we manifest the kind of life that we want to live. When we're able to manifest the things that we want, that's living a magical life. And then we talked a little bit about clearing out the clutter, and how. Especially with our in our inner world and with our outer world, right? And so identifying the voices that are causing us to feel fear or to feel um, um, or or to create doubt, and and we really we talked about that um, turning down the volume on our negative voices and resetting a positive voice, rewriting a positive voice. And then we talked about cleansing our outer energy, identifying the people that we let into our life and applying boundaries with people that seem to take our good energy and making room for more positive people in our life. And then <clears throat> we talked about the five steps to unlocking the magic in our lives. We talked about belief, expectation, receiving, becoming, and releasing. And now we're going to go through and we're going to talk about all of those. We had a journal exercise where we were writing about what discovering the magic would mean for us to discover our why. Why we're doing this, right? Why would we do these things? Um, what would be um, something that would happen that would... What would living in a magical life daily, a magical life, uh, mean for us? So what would it mean? Would it mean more happy time with your kids? Would it mean more abundance? Would it mean a job that was more fulfilling? Would it mean having all your ducks in a row? Some of us will never have our ducks in a row, but at least they're not like on fire or, you know, getting arrested in a cop car. 
you know, because that's how my ducks used to be. They were like either on fire or getting arrested or something ridiculous because my life was messy. It was more than just messy. My life <laughs> was, was chaotic. And so we're working through, as we work through these, these simple lessons, discovering what that magic would mean for us, identifying where we could clean up the clutter. And go, we also, in the beginning, went through and we took it. We looked at all the main areas of life, and we decided what, what, what in that area of life, what we're living in. Is it messy? Is it mundane? Is it magic? And so now, we're going to talk about belief. The first step to living a magical life is believing that you can live a magical life. That things can be magical for you. These are not going to, this, this doesn't work if we don't believe it, right? If you don't believe you're worthy of living a magical life, then you can't create one for yourself. Um, and of course, there's this idea of us remembering back to when we were kids, us remembering back to the way our lives used to be. Was there any point, a point where you lived in the magic, where you, you believed in magic? When was that? So when did it stop? When did seeing life as magical stop for you, if it ever did? We all have things that happen in our lives that we get caught up in, the interruptions, setbacks that life throws at us. And so... We're going to talk a little bit today about how we can take action to uncover our sense of wonder and belief in the magic of life. And the first step is to believe that magical that magic and miracles can and do happen and that magic does exist, that synchronicity exists, that manifestation is real. And that in some way, shape, or form, magic is very real and very much alive and very much part of our world. And what you do to regain that belief in magic is begin to think about it and think about how it did exist and all the reasons that, all the, the ways in which you can list to remind yourself that magic is real when when have you experienced when did you experience magic can you come up with times in your life where you really felt like you were experiencing the magic of life when you when you created something you didn't think you'd be able to create or when you completed a project that you thought would be too hard or that you never thought you'd be able to do when you accomplished something that you, that you thought you might not be able to accomplish when you overcame something really difficult. These are examples of how magic exists in your life. So looking for proof and evidence that magic exists and that it's happened in your life is one way. But another way is what I would say is feeding your faith but starving your doubts, right? And so faith is things that you believe in without having actual proof that they exist, right? They're the things that we choose to believe in, even if we're not, even if we don't have any physical evidence that they're, that they really exist. And so having faith that magic is real, what it will take is us removing the things that discourage us and that cause us to doubt. And so, it's this setting a, a tone for what you want to create for yourself. And, and then saying it out loud, I would like to create a business that replaces the income that I got from my full-time job. And then I listen. What comes up then? And I'm going to write down all the things that come up. I'm going to write down all the things that come up. So all those doubts. And then I'm going to ask myself if they're true. So 
that's for other people, not for me. Other people create businesses that replace their income, but not me. So that could be one thing. So how do you know that you can become that person that has that. So how can I get rid of those I'll see it when I believe it type of thoughts and inner narratives going on, right? How do I get rid of those? Well, we can rewrite them with things like EFT tapping. We can do belief coding and things like that. But really it's more of a asking the questions, right? So, I believe, say, say, I, what I want to create is a business to replace my income that I had when I had a job. And I think that that's available for others, but not for myself. Well, why not? Do I have a reason to believe that that's available for others, but not for myself? Why not me? And guess what? I can't think of one reason why it wouldn't be available for me, except for the fact that I might be afraid that I'll have to work too hard. I might be afraid that I won't be good at it. I might be afraid that, who am I? I might be thinking, who am I to be doing these things when there are so many people, other people out there that are, you know, more talented than I and that are doing it. <coughs> None of these things are actually true. When I sit down and I think about it, is it actually true that I don't deserve to have a business that replaces my income? No, of course not. Of course it doesn't. Does it, does it, does it, is it true that I feel like I might, that, that it might require too much work? Yes, I do believe that. But is it true? I've worked through that belief already. It's not true. Hard work does not necessarily equal success. They are not unanimously always true. Those two things do not always go together. They are not, they are not, uh, what's the word that I was trying to, that I was using before. They're not complete and total truths. They're only partial truths. They're only true sometimes. And so writing down the things that we've accomplished that are, that were really hard. Writing down a list of the things that we've accomplished that we thought maybe we wouldn't be able to accomplish. Those kinds of things, we want to write them down so that we have evidence that magic is real. And then we want to wait and see what comes up and rewrite those beliefs that we have that tell us that we can't do it. And so this is not only about rewriting those beliefs, but it's about being the person that deserves those things, being the person that accomplishes these things, stepping into the identity of the person who deserves, deserves the thing, the person who doesn't have these false beliefs or these limiting beliefs around things. Um, the you that you see when you look in the mirror is the you that you will wind up being, right? And so take a look at yourself. The way you view yourself and the way you show up for yourself in your daily, everyday life is how if that's what you're going to get. And so, if you want to change something that's going on in your life, you have to step into being the kind of person that deserves that change, the kind of person that commands those kinds of things in life, the kind of person that holds the belief systems to support those things kind of person who has faith in themselves and who unwaveringly 
believes in themselves and that these things that you want the things the manifestations that you that you want the the magic that you want in your life believing that you deserve them and that they're available for you is the very very first step to living a magical life believing that you can have it that it is available for you that you are deserving of it and trying to begin to rewrite any of those beliefs or those thoughts that tell you otherwise and so identity shifting is also going to be a big one here as well how do we step into that next highest version of ourselves it comes with a change in perception and how do you change your perception of yourself well it's identifying how you view yourself and being really honest about it like how really do you view yourself write down all those qualities that you would give yourself write down all the things that you think you deserve all the things you believe about yourself and then are they true are they true is it possible that you can step into the next version of yourself and and make any of these things that you wish come true the one thing that all people that are successful and have manifested and and worked hard and gotten the things that they wanted in life the people that have gotten to where they wanted to be in life all have one thing in common they believed in themselves even if not at first if they didn't totally believe in themselves at the beginning so is it possible that this could happen for me if you just believe that it's possible that you can get to where you want to be that you can live a magical life that's a great place to start and so looking for the evidence that life is magical and identifying the ways in which we are not standing fully in that in that identity believing that it's possible is where you want to start having faith in that something's coming that you don't see yet having faith that all things are possible it's hard watching people who are settled in accepting less for themselves than they can have all of us do this to an extent we sit here and we accept le less we accept less than what we deserve we accept less than what we know is available to us starving your doubts so I'm trying to think of how to word this so in the same way that we increase things that motivate us we're around positive people more we are um, adding uh, we're going to be around people that that have what we want out of life and the people that have the attitude that they want out of life in the same way that we're increasing all these positive influences on us we want to then do the opposite with the things that aren't good for us right and so having really firm boundaries on people that aren't that aren't serving us that are higher good people people that say things that cause us to not believe in ourselves I'll give you an example I had a best friend from early in high school all the way up until just recently when I decided that I wanted to start my own business and be an online coach and create courses and programs she told me I needed to go to college and be a therapist and that I needed to spend all that money on school and that you know it I wasn't going to be helping people that I was you know all sorts of wild stuff but it was all her beliefs it was all her own internal beliefs thinking that 
it's not possible unless I do it the, the way that, you know, everyone else does things, then I'm not going to be successful at it. And I wouldn't be here right now if I was still listening to her. I had to actually stop talking to her. I had to actually stop talking to a lifelong friend, one of my only lifelong friends. And I had to because every time I went to go do something, I wasn't succeeding at it because I was listening to her voice in my own, in my head. Her voice had become my inner voice. And I was second guessing myself. I had to put an end to it. I had to put a stop to it. This kind of a path does require stuff like that. I hate to say it. But as we raise our frequency, as we raise our belief systems in ourselves, as we step out of the messy and the mundane and start to step into a life full of magic where we expect a life of magic, where we're creating a life of magic for ourselves, we're going to have to let go of all of the things that don't serve us, the things that aren't serving us. And it may not be fun, but we have to starve the things that cause ourselves to second guess and doubt ourselves. And so, I invite you to sit down and write down all of the ways in which you can get rid of the things that are no longer serving you. All of the ways in which you can shut down those voices of doubt. Even if it means you don't tell people what your goals are. Even if it means that you don't tell people that you have the desire to manifest something or that you're intentionally trying to manifest something. Sometimes it's better just keeping those things to ourselves until we've succeeded. Because then we can't, they won't be giving us their doubts. That's one of the biggest things I think that people don't realize when stepping into a life of personal and spiritual evolution, intentionally up-leveling our lives. We have to watch who we share these desires with and who we share our work with and who we share these things with because then they in turn feed us their doubts which become part of our inner voice as well and so we really have to be careful who we're telling about our dreams and our desires and our goals and to only be around people who are going to support you even if they have their own doubts, people that aren't going to load you up with their doubts. And so that's super important that we're working towards feeding our faith, feeding our belief in ourselves, surrounding ourselves with things, people, videos, content, um, the, the movies and, and, and news that we watch, the TV shows we watch, all of these things need to be supportive of our faith and our belief in ourselves and we need to start not listening to and really tuning out and getting rid of those things that distract us from our goals that distract us from our belief in ourselves, our faith that it's coming our faith that we deserve it and our faith that if we just continue to move forward where it's going to work it has to because here's the thing, if you want something bad enough and you're using your, you're using your everything, everything that's available to you, right? You're rewriting beliefs. You're really believing in yourself. You're getting rid of the doubts. You're upping your vibration. You're surrounding yourself with the right people. You're not too obsessed with it to the point where you're resonating with, a, with lack. You have to get there. You will eventually get there. That's the way it has to work. So if you tick off all the boxes, you will eventually wind up where you want to be. There is no other way. Unless you're listening to the doubts, right? Unless we continue to listen to the doubts. Surround yourself by people who see you as priceless. Exactly. And people who see the world in which we live as a world of infinite possibilities, right? You... We want to start really switching to, shifting to a different kind of viewing the world, right? We want to view less of what is and view more of what's possible. Look around for the evidence of the people who have created the things they've desired. We're online. Some of it's bullshit. But there are a lot of people on the internet who have manifested what they wanted in one way or another. 
there are people who have amazing success. It's available, and it's available for all of us. But we have to learn how to feed the faith and starve our doubts. So who we're surrounding ourselves with, the things that we're listening to. I mean, Abraham Hicks is a kind of like a, a, um, like a beginner's law of attraction teacher. But Lynn, let me tell you, she does these rampages, and I still listen to them that like ups your vibration and gets you thinking in the way that you you start to really believe in yourself those are really amazing to listen to if ever you have doubts um she does these rampages and they're amazing abe hicks just you can just um uh google that or uh, look it up on youtube um abraham hicks it's um esther hicks she channels a being of higher consciousness it's a collective of higher consciousness named abraham and she teaches law of attraction absolutely people who can hear your vision adam and mom say yes that's possible instead of giving you, exactly instead of giving you negativity right so instead of my friend saying to me um well i think that you should go to college for five years and get this degree and get that degree and get this certification and that one she didn't even just give me the benefit of the doubt of being like oh you could make that happen if you just learn the right skills you know sure that's possible that you could that you could accomplish what you're looking to accomplish without you know without going to school but no she was too wrapped up in her own shit she was too wrapped up in her own shit like that she spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on college and got a master's degree and she's still not where she wants to be in life right and she's got all these school loans to pay back and she watched me fuck around, wind up in addiction, then get myself clean. And now, if I don't go to college and spend all that money and all that time and take all them tests and do all those jumping through, all them hoops that she jumped through, but I wind up just as successful as she is, if not more, boy, would she be fucking mad. And I love her to death. I'm not mad at her for it. But I cannot have her in my life right now. Maybe later. But I cannot have her in my life right now because I'm trying to bypass all that bullshit hoops that she jumped through. And I know that I can succeed without them. And I, I find it sad. It's a shame that she can't believe it. She'll believe it when she sees it, I'm sure. And, 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 and that's going to be tough for me because it's one of those things. Do I run back and do I go back and say, we can be friends now that I'm successful, now that I did what you thought I couldn't do. That's kind of like rubbing it in somebody's face. But the truth is, like, she's my friend and I love her. So that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for me. But I am going to succeed at what I'm doing. I have aligned myself in a way that if I just continue to do the next best thing, the next right thing, and I continue to do the steps, I have a system. I have steps. And I continue to to invest in, in mentorship. And I continue to, to work on building relationships and to making making my products and my courses better there's no way that I won't succeed because I'm not going to give up and so really it's about working really hard to believe that anything's possible even for you even if you don't see how it's going to happen even if you don't have any idea what's going to happen next but really, I think that's a little easier for us than it is working on our doubts. Working on our, oh, but I've seen all this evidence that people that work hard don't always get what they want. They don't always get what they're working for towards. No, you're right. They don't. They don't. But that doesn't mean that they couldn't or that, you know, it doesn't mean that they can't. It doesn't mean that it doesn't happen for people. There are reasons why it doesn't happen for some. I can't remember the word right now, but it's the concept that you are happy because the person you love is happy without diminishing anything about yourself. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I, I'm not sure what the word is right now either, but I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. People are too wrapped, wrapped up in the stories that they're taught by society. There are people who are so wrapped up in the way that the physical world runs that we were told that it runs that they can't understand they think that it's all like 
a falsehood that that like manifestation isn't real that's another thing she told me she told me manifestation isn't a real thing I said Var manifestation is a real thing you do create your reality and it's not just by going to school you create your reality by the way you think by the way you act by the, by how you show up you create your reality in so many different ways and there's science to back that it's a real thing <laughs> it's a real fucking thing and just because she didn't have any any examples for how she had done it herself and she you know she just re and that's another thing listening to people who make videos that are like law of attractions bullshit well yeah some of the popular law of attraction teachings are bullshit but the law itself is not bullshit like it, you may not want to call it law of attraction. I mean, there are a lot of other words that you could use. There are a lot of other, uh, the law of mirroring. That's one of them. That you attract what you are. Right? So, you're a mirror. So, what you are, you're attracting to you. That's the same as law of attraction. You know, so, there's a lot of different ways to describe it. But it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. We have far more power than we were ever taught we do. And a lot of people are just really stuck in the old way of thinking. The old way of thinking that you're right. People are not okay with understanding that if they have an unfulfilling life that they created it for themselves. You're absolutely right. You're right. And I'm not one that likes to tell people that. But the truth of the matter is, is that if we don't have radical responsibility in taking f blame for at least some of our contrib for con contributing to the situations that we're in and that we created it, we're never going to get anywhere. And so it is a whole different way of thinking. It is a whole different way of thinking and viewing the universe that we live in. But guess what? This is a far more accurate model of what the universe really works like and how in the reality that we really live in than the old paradigm. That was never the truth. It was never the truth that we don't have power. It was never the truth that we are a victim to our circumstances. It never was. We just never realized how to think about it, how to look at it. And I'm not one who's... A big fan of telling people who haven't done their own healing yet that they created their own circumstances that they it, it's because that's something that people have to come to on their own you, you traumatized people don't need to be told that they caused their own trauma they probably didn't cause all their own trauma but but we all contribute to our own shit to a certain extent right so it's like the small ways in which, we, in which we exacerbate things, right? So say I'm, I'm wounded because someone abandoned me. The next time that I'm in a relationship with someone and I'm afraid that I'm going to be abandoned, I act out in certain ways that wind up ruining a relationship. Is it my fault that the relationship got ruined? No, not entirely. But I contributed to it by acting out in ways because I was afraid that I was going to be abandoned. Now, it wasn't my fault that I was abandoned in the first place, but now I have allowed more than one relationship to be ruined because of my fear of abandonment, right? And so it's the little bits, it's the little places that we can take responsibility. Like, ah, oh, I see. I was contributing to that out of fear and out of my behaviors that stem from my fear. It's as simple as that. No one has to, you don't have to take full responsibility for traumas that happened to you that were caused by things outside of yourself. That's not the way it is. But that's what people think at first. And they're like, but there's no way. There's no way I'm responsible. Yes, radical responsibility without shame. Exactly. Understanding that we are always doing the best we can in any given moment. Exactly. You were doing the best you could with what you had and what you knew at that time. You couldn't have done any better because you didn't know any better based on our, aware on our awareness, our trauma, and our knowledge. Exactly. Exactly. And so becoming more aware. That's what all of this is about, becoming more aware. Becoming more aware of where I have beliefs that are getting in my way of creating the thing that I want to create. But not only where my beliefs come in, but where we're getting these beliefs from. 
do we have people in our families or our friends and our lives that are feeding our doubts we have to starve that out that's one of the biggest things if we don't get rid of what is causing our doubts then rewriting them makes no sense there's no point in rewriting our beliefs that are limiting us if we're going to continue to allow more influence to 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 give us limiting beliefs and so it's all part of a process and next week we're going to talk about our secret stories and how we begin to rewrite our secret stories. And so this week, be aware. Write down um, in your journal or sit down and um, do some journaling on what's possible for you, what you want, and what are your doubts that are in the way, and how can you starve those doubts in order to feed your faith. <coughs> Hello, Pono Pono is awesome. <clears throat> what is it? Um, I'm sorry. Let me let me look. I know I know it, but I'm sorry. What is it? I know it's a Hawaiian practice of forgiveness. So, asking forgiveness, expressing gratitude and love. I'm sorry. Thank you. I love you. Native American practices are always great. I love a lot of Native practices. Um, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. That's it. I knew it was close. I knew it was close. That's a great practice. I really enjoy a lot of Native practices. But I want to talk about our stories. Stories are stories. The story we tell ourselves, the story we live by. We have um, the the Toltec Indians um, tell us that we live, they call it the dream, right? So there's the personal dream, and then there's the collective dream, the dream of the planet. And so the dream of the planet is the, the dream that our society lives in, right? So it's the story, it's the myth of how we view our reality, of how we view ourselves and the world around us. And we're working on changing that because our old myths haven't been working for us. The myth of we're not worthy and we're separate from our creator and all of that nonsense. It's a myth. That's exactly what it is. It's a story. And that in turn, living in that environment, living in this in this paradigm has created stories similar to that inside of ourselves. So we have these stories that this doesn't, that good things don't happen for me, they only happen to other people, that money doesn't grow on trees, that um, rich people are selfish, or people that are successful do awful things to get to where they are. None of this is true, but we, are, we create this paradigm based on the planet's story, this, this, the myth of Christianity that most of us grew up in. And so, this is all about rewriting our paradigm. And next week, we're going to talk about our secret stories, the stories we secretly tell ourselves, some of them in which we may not even realize that we're telling ourselves, and how we can begin to rewrite those stories. And so, for this week, beliefs, 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 building your faith and starving your doubts. And so that's going to be our theme for the week until next Thursday. Let's try to think about some more ways where we can build up our belief in ourselves and we can get rid of our doubts. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you on Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your week.